Oh, I'm hungry. Hey, slaves, what's for dinner? See, that's what happens when you run out of food in RimWorld. Wait, you guys don't do that? Okay, maybe it's just me. <laughs> anyway, what exactly is food in RimWorld? Food is as the name implies. Food! Sorry, that was a bad joke. Anyway, food is one of the many resources your colony will need to thrive and remain happy. It provides nutrition, keeping ponds full, which is referred to as fat in this game. A lack of food leads to starvation, which has severe effects that I'll touch on shortly. Food can be obtained from certain plants or animals and eaten either raw or cooked into a delicious meal. While it may seem as simple as growing or hunting your own food and feeding it to your colonists, there are some things you should be aware of and things to watch out for. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. So as I was saying, food is very important, but why? Why, Newman? Why is it so important? Let me tell you. To expand on that, as I mentioned at the start, pawns have their individual food saturation levels, ranging from fed to hungry, urgently hungry, and finally starvation. Each level has a different effect on a pawn's mood. As you can see, hunger makes them unhappy. I mean, I'd be unhappy too. If someone forced me to be a slave all day and not eat anything, a pawn reaches fed at more than 25 points and caps out at a 100, after which any food eaten won't increase the value further. The base hunger rate, not including status, conditions, mods, and hunger modifiers, is a loss of one point per tick, one 2,500th of an in-game hour. And once it hits zero, they enter starvation and gain the malnutrition debuff. What's malnutrition? In real world, it's the condition where the affected pawn is starved for food and will grab anything edible nearby to fill themselves up. Yes, this includes human corpses. For every hour a pawn is malnourished, their malnutrition value increases by 2%, which has progressively more severe side effects, including an increasing hunger rate, a lowered consciousness, lowered mood, and increased chances of starting fights. At extreme malnutrition from 80 to 100%, the pawn will gain minus 50 mood modifier before losing consciousness and dying of extreme malnutrition if it isn't treated. Very bad, indeed. Note that once a pawn is malnourished, feeding them will decrease the condition by 2% per hour, and they will suffer from the side effects not including death during this process. It's generally better to avoid the condition to begin with instead of treating it. So if that's the case, how do you avoid malnutrition? To put it simply, make sure you have more than enough food in the freezer and don't get impulsive in accepting new pawns too fast. No point having a lot of pawns if they're all gonna die of starvation, right? Sometimes those setbacks are unavoidable. You can't plan for natural disasters or unexpected events that wipe out your stocks of food and wildlife, but don't worry. If you're faced with uh, that sort of situation, all is not loss. There's still nutrient paste. It won't do wonders for your pawn's mood, but nutrient paste is a highly effective form of nutrition if that's all you need. For six of any ingredient, you get 0.9 nutrition, the same amount as a fine meal. Ease of access is also important to ensure that pawns don't starve. Make sure the meals are stored in a central location and that they are cooked. Why cooked, you may ask? Because cooked food tends to provide much better nutrition than raw food, even if the cooked food is something relatively basic. Welcome to the rice fields. Normally, I'd let my pawns do all the work, but sometimes you just gotta get things done yourself. And that includes reminding you guys to subscribe to my channel. If you've been enjoying this video so far, do click that subscribe button so you can know when more interesting content comes out. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, they get it. All right, let's get back to the video. Someone take this thing from me. I don't want to carry it anymore. Speaking of cooking, let's talk about the difference between raw and cooked food. Raw food items can be gathered in the wild, hunted, or even farmed as the ingredients for nutrient paste dispensers and meal recipes. In general, eating raw food isn't recommended, and not just because of the aforementioned nutritional difference. Eating it also inflicts pawns with an eight raw food debuff for a negative seven mood. Not good, not good at all. This only affects pawns, however, as animals are able to eat raw food with no ill effects. Okay, not just animals, prisoners and pawns you hate can eat raw foods too. Not all raw food inflicts the mood debuff though. There are three types of raw food that actually taste good. Berries, milk, insect jelly, though in terms of nutrition they still can't be cooked food. As for cooked food, it's made using raw ingredients to create meals. Just drag the ingredients over to an electric stove, field stove, or campfire and voila! You have a cooked meal. There are many types of cooked meals, but in short different meals have varying levels of quality which 
further affects the amount of nutrients and mood buffs provided. Aside from meals found in the base game, the Vanilla Cooking Expanded mod also brings a lot more variety to your menu by adding 17 new meals divided into 5 main categories, bakes, desserts, soups, grills, and deep fry. Bakes require flour as a main ingredient. The main advantage of this meal type is mass production, with one recipe creating two meals without increasing the ingredient cost. Pretty handy, eh? On the other hand, the nutritional value of bakes is slightly lower than normal meals since pastries and pies aren't exactly the most healthy type of food. The second category added is desserts, requiring fruit. Desserts function as a type of drug instead of food. This means desserts can be consumed while pawns are socializing, like the higher tiers of food in the base game. Desserts provide a mood buff. Eight, a Fine, lavish gourmet dessert. The cool thing is, this buff is stackable with the base game buff. Beware though, like any other drug, desserts are addictive. The third category of food added is grills. Grilled food requires meat, and you'll need to construct a wood fired grill beforehand. Grilled food's special benefit is a 25% reduction in hunger rate for 12 hours. The effect only lasts while the meal is in warm temperatures, though. Upon coming into contact with cold weather, like being frozen in a fridge, it loses this bonus. We also have soup. They're even better than bakes when it comes to mass production, producing 10 times meals per recipe. This means you'll need less manpower, which you can funnel towards other things, like changing my slides. Sorry, I'm not sure where my slide guy went. Hey, where are you? I thought you were supposed to help me with my presentation. Okay, just hurry up, buy them and come back. What? what where are you? What do you mean, soup? Get out of the soup aisle! Well, more soup? What about down the hall? Where are you? What's the name of the store? What are you doing buying gardening supplies in a soup store, idiot? We apologize for the interruption. The pawn has been sent to the meat grind. Uh, sorry, I mean time out. Like bakes, though, soups have a lower nutritional value, they also have the disadvantage of taking a long time to cook, requiring a period of several days to cook over a special cooking pot. Oh no, it looks like the pawns are unhappy. If your pawns are tired of bland soup, try deep frying no food. You can deep fry all kinds of raw food, from fish to meat to veggies. Time to open a Nubert's fried chicken, I, I guess. Or not, I, I don't want to get sued. Anyway, fried food cooks very fast, boils fast, and also raises the mood of your pawns. That's not the only thing it raises, though. It also raises their cholesterol levels. Lastly, there's also the category of gourmet meals. It's not a specific meal type like soups or grills, but an additional quality tier above the base game, simple, fine, and lavish meal. Gourmet meals sit in between fine and lavish meals in terms of nutrition, but their real benefit lies in allowing you to add condiments. A new feature in the mod which provides specific buffs depending on the condiment. Condiment buffs can be very powerful situationally, but a few of them come with debilitating drawbacks as well, so use them wisely. Be aware there are also various types of food related illnesses. The main one you'll encounter in the base game is food poisoning. All types of food can potentially give your pawns food poisoning, but cooked food only triggers this if handled by unskilled cooks or exposed to a dirty environment. Whereas all raw food has a 2% chance of giving food poisoning. Like malnutrition, food poisoning is another debuff condition placed on your pawns. Unlike malnutrition, it isn't fatal, but can be very debilitating to the productivity and mood of an affected pawn. Symptoms include violence Vomiting, pain, impaired movement, manipulation, and consciousness, reduced blood filtration, and slower eating. Did we mention vomiting? Lots of vomiting. So much vomiting. Food poisoning works in reverse from malnutrition, beginning at maximum severity, 100%, and going away within 24 hours. The vanilla cooking expanded mod adds another three conditions to further complicate matters for your pawns, namely cholesterol, diabetes, and high blood pressure, each caused by an imbalanced diet. Cholesterol introduces the chance of a pawn on developing a heart attack or artery blockage. Diabetes causes increased hunger rate and lowered productivity, and high blood pressure decreases <coughs> blood pumping and filtration. Fortunately, they're a bit easier to manage than in real life. Like food poisoning, each disease's progression starts at 100%, decreasing by 1% daily till it hits zero, and is fully cured. On another note, when cooking and storing food, be aware that all food products, whether raw or cooked, can expire and become inedible. Their shelf life and rate of degeneration varies, but raw ingredients generally last longer 
longer than cooked meals. Here's a handy tip upon cooking raw ingredients into meals, the shelf life timer is reset. If your ingredients are going to be wasted away, you might as well cook them up to be eaten or stored for a few more days. Or if you don't want to cook the food, keep it in a freezer where it'll never spoil. Note that the temperature has to be at zero degrees Celsius for this to work though, otherwise it'll just slow down the expiration process. Alternatively, using the canning bench introduced in Vanilla and Cooking Expanded, you can can your food and keep it indefinitely. Meat, fish, vegetables, and fruits are all available for canning, but you'll need to use the steel resource to manufacture these cans. Since I've gone over all that, let's move on to the next topic. How can you produce and grow your own food? Food can come from either crops or animals. There are five main crop types in the base game, rice, corn, hay grass, potatoes, and strawberries. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages, meaning you can't just plant one kind of crop and expect to meet all the food needs of your pond. In RimWorld, when you're first starting out and planting crops, rice will be your basic harvest. Rice is quite a reliable crop as it grows quickly, which ensures a consistent supply of food. It takes well to rich soil and hydroponics, but grows poorly in gravel. Eventually though, you'll want to diversify into other crops as rice has a low yield per harvest. The amount of labor needed to harvest it also makes rice less efficient for the mid and late game, when you'll need lots of pawns attending to various other tasks. There's also corn. Out of all the crops, it's the hardiest, boasting 150 hit points, compared to the lowest HP total 85, which means it resists pests and diseases well. Corn doesn't like a lot of labor to grow, which means you can focus on your pawns and tending to other plants, and it also produces a sizable harvest, in case you need to store the corn away for an emergency. It also has a long shelf life. The downside is that it takes a long time to grow, so you won't be able to have constant access to it. This also makes it risky if your crops get destroyed. Corn grows well in rich soil and doesn't take well the gravel or hydroponic basins. In general, you'll want to grow corn as supplemental food instead of a main primary source. Primarily when you have a lack of ingredients and growers or freezer space or whatever. You know what I mean. We've got some crops and animal products to cover, but first let's take a quick break. Has the video been informative for you so far? Got any feedback, suggestions, or questions? If you do, drop a comment down below. Let me know. Maybe we can add some more mods to this list for the future. Next we have hay grass. Oh yes, it's not meant to be a proper human food source as even when combined with meat to form kibble, your pawns will dislike the taste. Useful in an emergency, I suppose, but not recommended like corn. This plant can't grow in hydroponic basins either. Instead, a hay grass is a supplemental food for your grazing livestock with a long shelf life, very high nutritional output, and stacks of 200, where other crops cap out at 75 per stack. It's worthwhile to plant some hay grass if you need to feed your animals. And if you're in an environment where all those fancy plants that demand rich soil Oil and hydroponics basins can't thrive, plant potatoes instead. Potatoes are easy to grow and thrive in gravel as well as areas without fertile soil. Like deserts, pretty handy for the rugged survivalist colony, I'd say. Yes indeed. Unfortunately, this also means that potatoes have a shorter shelf life and grow poorly in rich soil and hydroponics. Lastly, we have strawberries. Remember when I mentioned berries under the raw food section? Out of all the crops, strawberries are the only ones that don't negatively affect their pond's mood when eaten. Interestingly, they also have a longer shelf life than cooked meals, but not as long as other raw crops. Strawberries also have a lower nutritional value than other crops. You'll want to grow strawberries before embarking on a medium or long journey as their shelf life means they are useful for sustaining travelers while they're unable to cook along the way. Alternatively, you could also use them as a food source if your colony is short on cooks. The Vanilla Cooking Expanded and Vanilla Plants Expanded mods also introduce a lot of new plants. For vanilla cooking, we have allspice, sugarcane, and wheat, which are all vital ingredients for the new recipes added. Allspice is an edible raw, and as the name implies, produces the condiment spices once processed. Sugarcane can be eaten raw for a low nutritional value, but is it really worth lies in producing sugar for desserts? That's where it is, people. That's where sugarcane's worth is. It's in the sugar. It's in the desserts. It's in the pies! Someone bring me a pie. Thank you. Oh, yes. 
Yes, pie. Oh yeah, video. As for wheat, it's a slow-growing plant that takes nearly an entire season to be ready for harvest. Used to make flour for bakes. Vanilla plants introduces a further 17. Yes, 17 plants, including fruit trees. Onions have the second shortest growth time. 5.6 days of all the mod plants. And are especially hardy, being immune to blight. The downside is that they're hard to harvest. Pumpkins have the slowest growth rate in the mod of 10.4 days. They can't be grown in hydroponics, but the upside is that their high health makes them resistant to disease or natural disasters, and they can also withstand a botched harvest. We also have peppers, the fastest growing mod plant. 5.2 days aside from their growth rate, there's nothing particularly special about them, except that animals won't dare to eat them. Too spicy, I suppose, but not too spicy for me, King Nubert, who loves spicy food. Oh yes, real world fact, Nubert loves spicy stuff. But let's get back to the video. Peas are the crop you'll want to grow in colonizing biomes with frequent rainfall like tropical forests or sea ice. Outside of rainy weather, they're generally too inefficient to be worth it, and you better off with other plants. The same thing applies to eggplants with hot weather, which is essentially anything above 36 degrees Celsius. Also, eggplants don't grow on soil with less than 71% fertility. Some plants are just fussy, I suppose. On the other hand, some plants are the opposite, being able to withstand even the worst disasters like the cabbage, for instance. A toxic fallout would normally be a major disaster that destroys crops and forces the colonies to subsist on rations or move out. But during fallouts, the cabbage doesn't actually die like other plants. Instead, it just stops growing and resumes after the fallout is clean. If your cabbages are already ready to harvest, that's even better. As a bonus, the growth rate of cabbages is 6.2 days is pretty decent too. The beet plant is rather similar as it's one of the few that can withstand cold temperatures instead of dying. Instead, it just grows really slowly at only 10% of the usual rate. Pretty handy if you need to keep a continuous stock of veggies throughout winter. On the downside, it requires skilled handling by pawns, meaning you can't just stick any random nobody as the farmer. Yes, yes, yes. Olga Club Your Face cannot go pick your beets. Nope. The last plant on the mod list is the tomato. Like the beet, it requires skilled handling, although to a lesser degree, 5 versus 8 plant skill. The tomato grows only in rich soil and isn't destroyed on harvesting, which is great. Basically, it's a reusable crop that you don't have to keep planting over and over, just make sure to tend it well. The mod also introduces grass to animals to eat. In short, a long varieties, as well as different fruit trees that grow in different biomes. Most fruit trees share the same nutrition stat, with the advantages and disadvantages of being minor by comparison. Like the banana tree having a quick harvest time. <laughs> the banana man. That's such a great song. All right. Like the banana tree having a quick harvest time and rotten plums being edible, some are also capable of domestication or even growing in pots. Apart from crops and trees, you can also get food byproducts from animals, which you'll need to cook the best meals. Firstly, there's meat. Different rimworld animals provide varying amounts of meat when butchered, which is further affected by how skilled the butcher is. Milk is another byproduct that can be obtained from specific tamed female animals, namely cows, elk, caribou, buffalo, and dromedaries. Dromedaries produce milk less affectionately at 10 units per every two days, while the others produce 12 units. The vanilla cooking expanded mod also allows you to turn turn your milk into cheese at a rate of 0.5 cheese per bucket of milk, meaning you need two buckets to make one cheese. This can be done by pouring milk into a newly introduced machine, the cheese press. The longer you leave your milk in the press, the higher the output quality, ranging from awful, worth $5 at 5 days, to legendary, worth $50 at 75 days. Patience is key in this case. Eggs can be obtained from chickens, cassowary, cobras, emus, iguanas, ostriches, tortoises, or turkeys, although chickens remain the most efficient egg producing animal like plant produce they can be eaten raw but will produce the same mood debuff now it's all well and good to grow your own food but you have to protect it too three major threats to crops and livestock are fire raiders and dangerous wildlife for raiders and wildlife you can generally deter them using walls and possibly some armed guards it's also advisable to build between fields to stop plant blight from spreading and cut your losses as for fire which tends to be a problem in heavily wooded biomes like forest and swamps, roofs work best. Building roofs around your crop fields will halt the spread of fire and you don't even need to build full walls. Another option would be to use fire foam poppers so you can quickly put out the flames. Seasons are also a factor to consider when growing food as the temperature differences can affect crop yields. Crops tend to grow best in the summer, but sun lamps and greenhouses can act as a substitute in a pinch and allow for a more stable food supply. Just remember to turn them off when you're not using them to save electricity. Even 
Even in biomes with permanent summer weather, it's still a good idea to set up a greenhouse if a toxic fallout occurs. It can offer a safe environment to grow crops away from open air. The Vanilla Plants Expanded Mod adds yet another method to improve your soil fertility and farming yields. Tilling the soil. It's not generally compulsory for farming, and you can get it by with the base game's functionality, but if you want to improve crop quality, this is useful. That's about all the basic tips and tricks you'll need to know when it comes to handling food and room roll. Do pay attention to the advice I've given. You'll need it to ensure your colony building experience goes smoothly. But then again, making mistakes is part of the fun in room roll, just so you can laugh at what goes horribly, horribly wrong. I hope you enjoyed my guide. For more of these videos on other room roll topics, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'd like to quickly thank all of our Patreons that help support us. Let the list fly. See you all next time.